How do you make sure the organization will sustain this culture of thinking outside the box? Live it. Get it. Ex get people exposed to it. Let them uh, let them see uh, what it can do. Recognize that that with this material, we're influencing people, not just organizations. So we're investing in those people, we're investing in, in them, and uh, they will continue to live this. They will continue, this will become part of their, their life. This can become part of the culture and, and, and stay part of the culture, even if the explicit attention to uh, the program materials or the rollout or something might, might, might stumble or might even stop. Um, I, uh, you know, each each organization has to figure their own way on this. And when I left, when I left uh, Treasury, I, uh, you always hear the story of well, you, you know, leave an envelope in the drawer, and maybe somebody that comes along will will read the envelope, and they'll and they'll pick it up, and they'll might see some wisdom in that. Um, so you know, one of the things that I left in the drawer, if you will, was uh, that I thought this was pretty important stuff. And so, you know, you just do what you can do to influence people, but you recognize. That, that, that ultimately uh, it, others might have different priorities. Others might have different choices. Somebody else might come into an organization and they might not have made this, this particular item a priority. I will say that I do talk to people, uh, having been retired for a while, I still talk occasionally to people that are in public debt. And invariably, our conversation comes back to the Arbinger material. And, and, and I swear, Cameron, I don't take it there. I, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in talking about children and how you do it and all this kind of stuff. But, but invariably, the conversation will come back to this. And peop, it's, stick, it's sticky. People are still processing. They're still thinking. They're, it's still influencing their lives. And so I know at that level, regardless of what's going on elsewhere, and even if they leave that organization, public debt, and go somewhere else, they're going to take this with them at the personal level. So um, you can't unlearn it. I mean, I can try to ignore it. I can try, try to pretend that it doesn't exist, but I can't ignore the message of this material. And so I think it just continues through through the people that are, that are uh, influenced by it, uh, wherever they happen to be. That's great. Here, here's another uh, question from uh, Teresa Campbell. What did you do to keep the staff engaged in the Arbinger mindset? And then she goes on and asks a, a kind of a follow-up to that. Was there follow-up to the training to keep it from landing in the pile of unforgotten trainings? Uh, a two-part question. I mean, you might be from the uh, Washington Press Corps. That's what they're, <laughs> that's what they're always doing. Um, we, did, we did some things. We, we created something, um, well, there were a couple of things. As I mentioned, this was part, this was all being done in part of something we called a values framework. So there were some other elements in those values framework. So for example, um, we had uh, a coaching element in our values framework where uh, we trained a number of our employees to be coaches. And we uh, offered individual coaching, you know, what would have been at that point, professional coaching through these offered by these trained people, we offered coaching to any of our 2,000 employees that wanted to take advantage of it. So that would be an example. Now, at the time, Arbinger Today offers coaching support specifically uh, framed around the Arbinger principles. At that time, I don't think Arbinger did. In any event, we had, we had folks trained in a different area. But I talked to our coaches, and everything they were learning, everything they were talking to their clients about, everything they did was absolutely consistent with the Arbinger principles. So in a sense, we were reinforcing it through the coaching that we were giving to our employees. That was one, that was one way. We, uh, we created something called booster shots. And we named those booster shots because it was sort of, we thought it was apt. It was like, you know, you, you know, I've been inoculated or I've, I've, you know, I've gotten the message, but now I want to keep it alive. How do I do that? So that allowed us to, to bring together uh, just in a, in a two or well, maybe an hour and a half, two hour meeting or something, people that had been through our, through our workshop and they were able to get together and just reinforce each other's help, help each other solve problems. And how's it going for you? How's it going for you? And, and 
oftentimes we'd have an executive that would hang out and sit in, but we really didn't have to do anything if we were there because the, 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 the people would come together and they would help each other. So that was a good, you know, that was a good thing. Now, not everyone took advantage of that, but it was out there, uh, for, for people that did. And so those were just a couple of examples of things we did. Now, the one thing, uh, that I, that I would mention as I've learned more and more about, uh, more current Arbinger offerings is that I happened to catch Arbinger, or Arbinger happened to catch me at a time when Arbinger was was sort of growing up a little bit. I mean, a strange kind of way to put it, but they were evolving. And I don't think it would be uh, out of school. I don't think I would be kicked off the webinar to say that the Arbinger implementation assistance and the tools uh, to assist organizations after the training weren't as robust then as they are now. I've seen those tools and that assistance come along. It, 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 you know, it's been dramatic. So right now, there's there are a lot of tools. There's a lot of ongoing assistance that's available to organizations where it wasn't quite as readily available or readily apparent back then. So we sort of had to figure it out on our own. So um, you know, we did, and that was okay. It wasn't a problem. But uh, you know, and I'm not living a life of regret, but we probably would have taken advantage of those implementation tools had they existed. Sure.